Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, a presidential primary primer will tell you what you need to know before you cast your ballot this month. A seven-year-old Montgomery County girl is being recognized as an everyday hero. And a Gaithersburg High School senior earns the Girl Scouts' most prestigious award. But we begin with a new innovative website that was launched this week to help promote property tax incentives for making your home more accessible. Lorna Virgili reports. Ten years ago, I started having these issues with balance. And I lived in a large two, three story home and I said, not gonna work. So we started looking into building a home that was accessible. A sudden medical condition had Kathy Hansen rethink on how to live inside her home. She sold her house and had one custom built with features to help her move around. Now, in the height of the remodeling season, the Department of Permitting Services has launched a new website that contains straightforward information on how to improve your home and get a tax credit. What we want to do is to assist those who are actually living in Montgomery County and who want to live in the communities and the houses they currently have. And also to assist the businesses that are helping to assist those who want to live in the county. And so some time ago, we looked at a variety of approaches. And what we wanted to do was provide an incentive, a tax incentive, that would help those who wanted to make their house much more accessible, both for those who are disabled as well as for those who are seniors. The Design for Life website focuses on helping residents in learning on how to build and incorporate basic accessibility design features to make their home welcoming to persons living with disability and to seniors. It's all stages and all ages. It's about making homes that are welcome and accessible, increasing, making it easy to increase the stock of this type of housing in Montgomery County. As we see with construction, um, we, we see hallways get smaller and smaller, doorways get smaller and smaller, and we actually want to make them bigger and bigger so that more people can enter them. There are different degrees of the tax credit on the property tax, up to $10,000 in a five-year period, and no more than a $2,000 credit per year. All program information can be found on the new website, designforlifemc.org. Another bonus is that the Department of Permitting Services will fast-track permits related to Design for Life remodeling. In Rockville, for County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgili. Rebuilding Together is a national nonprofit that works to preserve affordable home ownership. A host of county officials recently participated in a breakfast event celebrating a major milestone for the county chapter of this organization. Susan Kennedy reports. We want to thank each of you for being here with us this morning to celebrate 25 years of restoring the feeling of home to thousands of residents across Montgomery County. Rebuilding Together is an organization that's goal is to provide a safe and healthy home for every individual in Montgomery County. They provide accessible modifications, critical need repairs, and energy efficiency upgrades to low-income homeowners at no cost. <laughs> Montgomery County Council President Nancy Florine was on hand to give out awards to volunteers and donors. What you do is truly extraordinary. To see the homes that you all fix and support, to see the families within those homes who, whose lives you're changing, is to see uh, a world that many Montgomery County residents know nothing about. There are thousands of homeowners across Montgomery County that oftentimes go unrecognized, but they are struggling to make ends meet forced to choose between whether they'll buy groceries or medicine, and whether they'll buy medicine or maintain the only housing they can afford. I cried myself to sleep at night, unsure of what the next day would bring. That neighbor of mine, a Navy man who had once needed repairs to his own home, had shared with me the name of an organization he'd been able to get help from from a few years back. And that name of the organization was Rebuilding Together, Montgomery County. When I called Rebuilding Together, answered, with compassion, with care, and with understanding. 
you, all of you, saved our lives. I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that. Thank you for listening to my story. Thank you very much. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. The Wheaton Community Recreation Center has closed its doors for the last time to make room for a new combined facility. During the construction of the new facility, most programming at the Wheaton Recreation Center is being relocated to other centers. We are so thrilled to have the new facility opening up. It's going to include both a senior center component as well as a multi-bay gymnasium, an auxiliary gym, very similar to our White Oak Community Recreation Center in terms of net square footage and it will give us such more flexibility in being able to serve so many more county residents. And we couldn't be more excited about the project. For updates on construction of the new state-of-the-art rec center and library complex, visit the Department of General Services Neighborhood Projects page. The new facility is scheduled to open in 2018. The Montgomery County Council will hold five public hearings on the county executive's proposed fiscal year 2017 operating budget. The public hearings will take place at 7 p.m. on April 5th and at 1.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. on April 6th and 7th. All hearings will take place in the third floor of the council office building at 100 Maryland Avenue in Rockville. The hearings will be televised live by County Cable Montgomery and they'll be live streamed on the county's website. On CCM, English captions will be available for viewers who choose the options for closed captioning one. And Spanish captions will be available for viewers who select closed captioning three. On the internet, there will be links for closed captioning in both English and Spanish. The number of speaker spots available for the public hearings is limited. You can sign up to testify online or by calling 240-777-7803. For more information, visit the council's website. The presidential primary election is set for April 26th and early voting takes place from April 14th through the 21st in Maryland. Here are five things you should know before you cast your ballot in the primary. Number one is the voter registration deadline. I want everybody to remember the deadline to register to vote or change your party affiliation is April 5th at 9 p.m. Number two. You can cast your ballot early in this election. Remember that early voting is going to be a great opportunity for you. April 14th to 21st from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. at one of 10 locations throughout the county. Number three is what you can expect on Election Day. Don't forget that Election Day is April 26th. Voting hours are 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. You must vote in your home precinct, so look at the back of your sample ballot if you're not sure where that is. And remember to try to vote during the middle of the day. There will be lines first thing in the morning. Be patient if you come then, otherwise if you can vote between 10 and 4, you're going to be better off. Number four is the importance of your sample ballot. We're mailing it right now to all of our registered voters in Montgomery County. It's a newsprint pamphlet, uh, about 14 to 16 pages. It's going to give you a copy of what your ballot will look like. It talks about the new voting system, gives you an absentee ballot application, gives you all the locations for early voting tells you where your polling place is. It's got a lot of information in it. Don't throw it away with the bathwater. Read through it, prepare with it, take it with you to the polling place. It'll make your, your day a lot easier. And number five is that the Board of Elections website is the place to go for even more election information. If you have any questions about anything related to voting in Montgomery County, visit our website, www.777vote.org, has all the information you need. Coming up on County Report this week, a seven-year-old Silver Spring girl is recognized as an everyday hero after she saves her dad's life. And Montgomery College premieres a documentary about local Vietnam vets. We'll take you to the screening right after this. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County Government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. 
So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Teaching your child to use 911 in an emergency could be one of the simplest and most important lessons you will ever share. And in one Montgomery County family, that lesson has made its youngest member a hero. Susan Kennedy reports. Hi. Jenna Valoria isn't your average hero. Oh, you did a great job. Me too. Last month, after finding her father unconscious, she had the sense to make the right call. I'm seven years old. Okay, is your mommy or daddy there? Yeah, my dad is on the floor and he's on the ground sleeping. So you knew when you saw your dad laying on the floor that he was sick? Yeah, he couldn't um, uh, wake up and he wouldn't answer to me. What happened after you called 911? I, I, I answered some questions and I answered the correct ones because I'm smart at it. Wow, that's amazing. Like, I can't believe that uh, she did uh, all these things. And She's a wonderful little girl. Oh, yes, yes, definitely. And for that, Jenna got the opportunity to come to the county's emergency communication center to receive an everyday hero medal and meet the dispatcher who talked to her until help arrived. Did she help you stay calm? Yeah. Without her phone call, who would have known what would have happened? Jenna is a poster child for doing everything right when faced with the challenge and stress of a potential life-threatening crisis and calling 911. It was a big day for Jenna. She met the fire chief, got a medal. The call gets sent to this computer and that's how the fire engine and the ambulance got to your house. Toured the 911 call center and spoke with reporters. But for the seven-year-old, all the excitement didn't phase her one bit. In Gaithersburg, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. Montgomery College has honored several Montgomery County residents who served in Vietnam by premiering a new documentary of their tales, honor, and gratitude. I'm Sarah Bachman Ducey. The and world premiere of Honor Peck and Gratitude was held at the Cultural Evans. Arts Center on the Tacoma and Park Fred Silver Evans. Spring campus of Montgomery yeah. College. The documentary chronicles the personal experiences of seven Montgomery yeah. County residents who served our country during the 50 year old war and how this historic event impacted their lives. Six of the seven veterans involved in the documentary were in attendance at the premiere. After the viewing, these vets eagerly answered questions from the audience and graciously elaborated on the details of how their experiences helped mold who they are. The documentary was initiated by Montgomery County Peg Station Partners and was produced by Dan Rankin of Montgomery College Television and Barbara Grunbaum of County Cable Montgomery. The documentary itself is not about the Vietnam War. It's about seven Montgomery County veterans and their experiences during their time in that war. It's educating people, it's informing people, and it's also preserving stories for everyone to see. The documentary can be viewed in its entirety at youtube.com slash Montgomery College. Just search Honor and Gratitude. For County Report This Week at Montgomery College, I'm James McLean. To commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War, the Daughters of the American Revolution hosted a wreath placing ceremony at Memorial Plaza on March 29th, which is also known as Vietnam Veterans Day. Our veterans came home. They were not appreciated. They were never welcomed home like they were following World War II. So for anyone who served in any capacity during the Vietnam War, Vietnam, or myself in Okinawa with Red Cross, it means a great deal to the, for a country to finally come together and appreciate what was done. These men were fighting for our freedom, and now they are very appreciative to finally be recognized 50 and 60 years later. We thank each Vietnam veteran for their service, and welcome home. After the terror attacks in Brussels last month, the Washington, D.C. metro area was on high alert. 
Security was increased at metro stations and airports across the region. My MC Media's Willie James Inman talked to commuters in Rockville. I don't know if you can do enough to prevent it, but um, I like that they do more. I don't know if you can do that all the time but it's nice, it makes me feel safe, so I'm sure everybody else feels safer. It's horrible to feel that you have to go in the public transportation and be all scared for your life and not, not knowing what to expect, it's really a horrible feeling. The first thing I thought about was uh, 36 years ago, I traveled on my own uh, on continental Europe and I traveled the trains and the subways and back then you never even thought twice about security, um, but I am, Understanding there's a total different reality of what's going on today. I'm not going to stop living my life because that's what they want. So I'm going to continue doing what I'm going to do. And I mean, if it happens, it happens. But I've got to live my life too. So it's definitely alarming and like kind of makes you open your eyes just to kind of be more careful. And there's like not you're never really safe. We need to be on the lookout, just people in general. You need to open your eyes, you need to pay attention, you need to be street smart. In its latest consumer alert, the Office of Consumer Protection has information about how to protect yourself from weather-related scams. Major snowstorms, hurricanes, tornadoes, and other weather events can result in damage to homes and property. Unfortunately, some unscrupulous contractors use this opportunity to take advantage of homeowners in need. How can you avoid being scammed? First, beware of door-to-door -door contractors. These are called storm chasers, and they usually show up immediately after the weather emergency. They can be easy to spot. They may not have a company logo or address on their truck, or they come without a business card, letterhead, or website. Next, ask for a license. The Maryland Home Improvement Commission issues licenses for Maryland companies, and you can check its website to confirm. The Maryland Department of Natural Resources licenses tree experts. Ask for a copy of the contractor's liability insurance as well. Look out for contractors who say they have extra materials and can cut you a great deal. This is more common with driveway paving and roofing. Be leery of anyone asking you to pay in cash or requiring payment up front. Look out for contractors who say they've been doing work for your neighbors but can't name any of them. Avoid contractors who pressure you for an immediate decision. Do your homework. It's best to get three estimates from different contractors, not just choose the first person who knocks on your door. And finally, remember the old, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. If the price is extremely low or the scope of the work is beyond what's reasonable, beware. The Office of Consumer Protection also keeps a record of complaints against contractors. Please go to the OCP website for more information. Coming up on County Report this week, the city of Rockville celebrates its local businesses. And later, we'll go to Gaithersburg, where a Girl Scout was recognized for her extraordinary work. Stay with us. Election Day is fast approaching. Is your registration current and accurate? Don't wait. Register online. It only takes minutes. Visit 777vote.org to check your registration. The deadline is April 5 at 9 p.m. Vote by mail ballots are also available. Visit the website to submit an application. Did you know there's a new voting system? Our website has information on the equipment you will now be using on Election Day. Check it out. Remember, your time, your voice, your vote. Sixty minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. In the city of Rockville, local leaders recently celebrated Business Appreciation Week. Rock 11 Now's Kathy Dantzler has more. 
Rockville is home to over 9,000 businesses, from small mom and pop shops to major corporations. And those businesses employ over 70,000 people. Last month, Rockville's mayor and council showed their appreciation to some of the businesses that call Rockville home. It was a part of the 11th annual Rockville Economic Development, or Ready's Business Appreciation Week. So Business Appreciation Week is our big business retention opportunity to get out and meet with as many companies as we can in a one week period. So this year we have 52 companies located here in Rockville and we'll be going out and visiting them within five days. Well we put together teams of ambassadors uh, and that includes our elected officials, ready staff, ready board members uh, and also our Rockville Chamber board members uh, and other partners from the state and from Montgomery County. So mayor and council uh, always are excited to be a part of this and to get out and meet some of the businesses here in the city. Well, it's an opportunity for us to say thank you and to show our appreciation to the businesses that are in the city that have moved their headquarters here. It's really something we do every year in conjunction with Ready Rockville Economic Development Inc. to just say thank you and to let the businesses in Rockville know how much we appreciate them being here. We are an IT consulting company. We do our strong points, our cybersecurity, software development. For one thing, the price of real estate here is a lot more economical than downtown D.C. We're close to a lot of major highways, a lot of infrastructure around here. We were able to get a lot more bang for our buck as far as space goes. We are pretty much always expanding. We've grown from about 20 people five years ago to over 200 people today, and uh, we keep growing every day. Ready is a public-private partnership formed in 1997 by the city of Rockville to strengthen and broaden the city's economic base through businesses, entrepreneurship, expansion, retention, and recruitment programs. For County Report This Week, I'm Kathy Dantzler. It's official. The Montgomery County Board of Education has unanimously voted to name the new Clarksburg Damascus Middle School after Hallie Wells. Construction is currently underway at 11701 Little Seneca Parkway. The new school is scheduled to open in August. According to its website, the new school will open with only 6th and 7th graders for the 2016-2017 school year. Montgomery County celebrated its sister city connections at an annual meeting held in Silver Spring. My MC Media's Willie James Inman was there. Montgomery County is celebrating nearly five years of sister city connections through food and culture. So the sister cities program to me was something that we started, but something that literally was already here. We simply had to tap into it. During the annual Montgomery Sister Cities meeting, Executive Leggett talked about the diversity of residents here in the county, which has helped build strong bonds with cultures from around the world. But if I had to guess, I would say 2017, we'll probably add a sister city in South Korea. There's a lot of uh, Koreans in Montgomery County. There's a lot of interest in uh, communities in Korea to be a sister city with Montgomery County. And I think on that trip, we'll try to combine that with a revisit to China. Volunteers who work with the Sister Cities program are inspired to be part of a global network. But part of my family uh, was part of uh, Sister Cities and I, I heard so many good things about, you know, about them and what they were doing and, you know, that interaction that they have with the community back home. So I decided to join. I keep on doing this because it is one of my passions to be part of, you know, a global community and being able to serve that community. And I think, you know, if you have a chance to go to China next time, don't just go to Beijing or Shanghai. Go to China, go to Xi'an and spend maybe a good two weeks there. But it's just a wonderful city. I was born there, I went to school there and it's my first hometown and uh, Maryland is my second hometown. So I feel so grateful that uh, these two of my hometowns are built together. Coming up next on County Report this week, I'll take you to Gaithersburg High School to meet a local Girl Scout Gold Award winner. And we'll introduce you to our Pet of the Week. Don't go away, County Report this week is coming right back. Mark your calendars, the Montgomery County Green Fest is coming to the Tacoma Park Community Center on April 30th. This year's Green Fest promises to be a fun-filled day of entertainment, community, and learning. Enjoy live music, learn how to green your home and neighborhood, watch an environmental film, and visit the exhibitors. Green Fest has activities for all ages and interests. 
Make sure you stop by on April 30th and explore your path to a greener life. One in five women and one in 16 men are sexually assaulted while they're in college. This is happening in Maryland, where we live. Did you know that across the United States, only 13% of rape survivors report assault? These statistics are not acceptable. If you think you don't know a victim, think again. It's a huge deal. Many people I know have been victims of sexual violence. It's not the victim's fault. No one asks for it, ever. Let your voice be heard. If you have been harmed by sexual misconduct, you should never feel ashamed. Ask for help. We can make a change together. It's on us. It's on all of us. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Gaithersburg High School recently held an assembly for a senior who earned the Girl Scouts' highest award. My MC Media's Willie James Inman reports. We are so excited to celebrate the special project that one of our students, Ms. Rachel Coates, did for her gold award um, for the Girl Scouts. And so today was just an opportunity for her to present the information that she did her project on, which was 22Q, and to share it with our student body uh, and also to celebrate and recognize her for achieving this amazing milestone. An assembly was held at Gaithersburg High School to recognize senior and Girl Scout gold award recipient Rachel Coates. Coates received the Gold Award, which is the highest honor for Girl Scouts, in February of this year. The city of Gaithersburg presented Coates with a certificate of achievement for her work on a public service announcement about 22Q during the assembly. I have 22Q and this is my PSA for Girl Scouts. I am doing this for my Gold Award. She was born with a rare genetic disorder and hopes to share a little bit about herself with the world. Years ago when Rachel was little, um, there were so many different names associated with it. So a lot of people didn't realize it was one and the same genetic disorder. So um, it bred confusion. So they came with 22Q because it is the part of the chromosome that is missing of the 22nd chromosome. Over 4,000 high school age Girl Scouts across the country are eligible to apply for the prestigious gold award, but only 200 receive it. She is probably among the most challenged people because of her condition to have ever done the Gold Award. It is a major achievement which really cannot be underestimated how important it was for her to be able to do that. I'm going through it right now and like getting it and it's really hard and the fact that Rachel got it and she did it all by herself, I, she's amazing. What's next for this Gold Award winning Girl Scout who loves music? She hopes to attend Montgomery College next year but for now, she'll keep on singing. So take it out and put it out to break me body smile. In Gaithersburg, I'm Willie James Inman for County Report This Week. Brookside Gardens will host its annual Green Matter Symposium on April 8th from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. This year's event is headlined A Garden Gateway. Looking for some inspiration? Experts at the April 8th Symposium will provide practical suggestions on how landscape projects can be designed and constructed in an environmentally beneficial way. For more information or to register, go to brooksidegardens.org. Now it's time to meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Kathy? Your pet of the week this week is Marshmallow, and as you can see, he is a very handsome dog. He's just about a year old. He's an American Bull Terrier mix. He is a sweetie, lots and lots of energy, and lots and lots of love. He is a favorite of the staff here. Please visit Marshmallow on the web at Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center.gov. With that, we close this edition of County Report This Week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. We leave you with some videography by CCM's Lauren Olson of the beautiful cherry blossoms in bloom in Bethesda's Kenwood community. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.